Greetings everyone. Welcome to Cotton Cast, an initiative by Bishop Cotton School Shimla where we talk about the rich history, unearthed stories and interesting facts of our school while also reflecting on themes that go above and beyond our school walls. The first episode of this podcast, Beyond the Podium, is about the 25th edition of Slaters. The astounding, the prestigious, the legendary co- debates competition of Bishop Cotton School. I'm Arjun, the host for the first episode and i'm excited to be here when i think of debating i imagine two random people arguing in the middle of the street a third coming up making it a competition and enjoying it speaking of people enjoying debates let us welcome our current headmaster and former teacher in charge of the first later team mr matthew prasad john and mr adiraj mustafi who was part of the first later team wow what a combination we welcome you both Thank you, Arjun. Happy to be here. Thank you, Headmaster Sir. Debating has been part of the rich culture at BCS for many years. How did the journey of the Reverend Samuel Slater Memorial Debates, or simply Slaters, begin? Um, in nineteen ninety-six, Adiraj and a friend of his called Raman Julka went off and won the Doon School Inter-School Debate, called the Chakrabarti Debate, and. a few months after that the senior staff were meeting and the headmaster wanted to know what we could host as an inter school competition one of the ideas that came up was that we should do dramatics and that was immediately shot down because of the complications of having so many schools coming in and uh, bringing all their material with them yeah the props and and yes their props and their sets and So finally the decision was made that we would do a debate but it wouldn't be a debate the way that other schools did the debate with all schools coming in for an evening one speaker speaking for and another speaker speaking against we would do it the way that we did our inter house uh, as a league with every school speaking together against other schools and so the very first slater was designed to work that way with school teams speaking against each other wow that's really amazing to know uh looking at you both together i cannot help but ask for you to have been the teacher in charge and now the headmaster and for from being the part of the first later team to now coaching it how has the relationship evolved over the years it's a, <clears throat> it's a good question we haven't met for ages and ages but uh, sir got in touch with me a few months ago um and one of the reasons he had gotten in touch with me was to uh, give me the honor of actually working with the current debating team and i wonder as to whether it's it's an honor i deserve or not because um i enjoyed debating then we had a great time then but at the same time you know the responsibility of training the slater debating team is it, it's an immense responsibility yeah the pressure <laughs> yeah it's it, it's it, the pressure and then there's the privilege of it as well so i felt extremely touched that after i don't know was it 22 23 years he chose to say that look this is the guy i want to come and yeah. do this um and that that was for me the main i think the abiding um the abiding emotion was that i was just touched and you know and privileged i think that's that's the easiest way for me to put it across yeah yeah Well, I don't think I had another choice. Uh, Adiraj wasn't only a member of the first debating team and a member of the winning team at Chakwati, but he was also a member of the first BCS student team that defeated the staff in the staff versus students debate. Yeah, you have told us about that. Yes. yes. Mr. Nihalaman, an old Catonian, had gotten in touch with us recently and said, "At the dais, it was no mercy. Away from the stage, it was friendship and laughter growing stronger." Was it actually true? Was Slater's in successful in building friendship over the years between the competitors? Uh yes it was and the the vision that we had before we even had the first Slater was that it was not going to be only a debating tournament but it was going to be an opportunity for young men and women from privileged backgrounds to meet and make lasting connections. Was it any fun? uh you're going to have to ask people like atharaj who actually took part in the debates and uh, interestingly 
he's still in touch with a number of people whom he got to know during Slater. Yeah, I, I think to address the first thing that Nihal said, and Nihal and I are probably um, the closest amongst, you know, um, amongst, but well, Nihal, Raman, and myself, we were really, really close friends. Um, during the debates, we hated each other. Right? There was no way that we were going to allow um, for, you know, for each other to, to win, to, to, to get a point off each other, anything. So it was, it was an extremely bitter rivalry. Right? Cutthroat. Yeah, absolutely cutthroat. Um, and we were great friends off, you know, so, so sort of off the, debating, off the debating podium. But when it came to Slater, this was a really interesting thing because for us, it was, this was such, a, it, it was such a massive event of these schools, a lot of whom we'd never interacted with before. You know, we'd never interacted with um, Wellum boys and Wellum girls. We'd never, we'd never really interacted with Mayo boys and Mayo girls. Mayo girls gave us a, like, a hollow thrashing in, in the semifinals. But we never interacted with these guys. And when I went to college, um, it was the captains of all these teams who were my closest friends in my first year of college. And it was a wonderful experience because I got a chance to play squash with them or act with them in their plays or, you know, work with them in class. And, and a lot of these relationships are still alive you know, even yeah. today, and it's, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, so the friendships really did evolve. Yeah, 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 definitely. Mr. Adiraj, taking the school as a sunflower field and Catonians as sunflowers, what were the initial reactions of the sunflowers when multiple suns crossed the field? It's a difficult question. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. Um, I, I think the best thing to do would be to put that question to the sunflowers itself, right? Um, yeah, but I for one am excited about it. You know, I think that there are two things about this. One is that um, to to put your analogy at the time at you know at let's say 1996 and how relevant it was at that at that point, and to place take the same ana analogy and place it in in the year what year is this now 2022? Yeah, right? and you find there's actually not too much of a difference in the you know, in the context between these, um, be between these two periods of time. Um, at the same time, it's, you know, there is this thing about, are we, are you taking a fish out of water when you say that you want to take, uh, when you want to take a bunch of guys who fundamentally have different interests, right, and you want to put them against something that is so cerebral, that is so intellectual, that is so, um, that is, it, it, it's not even academic, right? Because I think, at least right now, Bishop Cotton School has a wonderful academic culture. See, these guys really de dedicated to their studies and so on and so forth. But this is even beyond that. And to take these guys out from that and put them in that, it's, 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 it's quite interesting to see how it works. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to add here that even in 1996, uh, things were changing quite rapidly. But BCS still had a culture that was more sporting than cerebral. And in 1995 and 1996, running the inter-house debates as a league instead of as a knockout, it made debating in school into a sporting competition. Uh, house spirits were high. People were looking forward to the evenings when they would be in Irvin Hall and hearing their debates. I remember one little fellow from class seven going up after the debate was over and heading up to where his house was sitting on the stage and saying, the motion is carried because my house says so. Uh, that was the kind of spirit that yeah. was there and that, that, that helped to make Slater something that was looked forward to by the school. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Saurav Chauhan, an old Catonian and an ace debater himself, spoke of debating helping him to be more social than he actually was. Looking back, do you think literally events like Slater's have an impact on one's personality? Can one's persona affect the mood of competition in its entirety? I wouldn't say that it's one person. And I would say that learning how to speak in public and to have the confidence to not feel too nervous when you're interacting with people whom you haven't met, it does develop your personality to the extent where you find it easier to 
get along with people, you find it easier to make people like you, which is a very, very important skill. An interesting story I heard about the first letter. Courage in the face of adversity, a special award was made up on the spot. How did that pan out? So, this happened during the finals. Uh, the Dune School had practically demolished Mayo College girls with the first speaker of Dune coming up to speak against the motion. And the lead speaker from Mayo College put up a brilliant uh, rebuttal and uh, summing up at the end, knowing that they had already lost the debate. And uh, Mr. Mustafi, I remember calling, uh, I remember him calling me and calling Reverend Cherian and speaking to the judges and saying, we have to give this girl something. And that's how the award for courage in the face of adversity was won. I heard we lost to Mayo girls in the semi-final. Yes. What were the reactions of the Catonians? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, firstly, I, I just wanted to clarify, it wasn't this Mr. Mustafi that decided on that award. It was my father. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> mm. Um, mm. Um, our reaction to this loss in the semi-final, we, we were stunned, we were hurt, our egos were bruised. Um, up to that point, we had thought that we were we were the cat's whiskers. We we really actually thought that we we knew it all, mm -hmm. and that we'd conquered pretty much the entire you know the entire debating world. Um, and frankly, with with Sir's help, we were, we were a fairly inv invincible force. Um, wherever we guys would go, um, we guys would sort of come back with a collection of certificates and trophies and things like that. But here was a situation where you know we would we were cut down at our knees by people who were not even bothered by what we were talking about. And they were so calm and they were so composed about the entire thing. And the more calm and composed they were, the more angry and upset we would get. And you're a boxer, right? So yeah. um, so so I, I I think you know how that works. If you if you if you sort of really rile your opponent up and you start seeing them getting agitated, they start tending to make a lot more mistakes, you know. And that's what they were doing to us. And they were doing this to us as calmly and as in, in as composed a manner as one could expect. When we when the debate was over, we thought that if not anything else, because we're Catonians, we've won. It turned out that it wasn't true. Uh, it took us a long time to get over it. We loved the fact that Don't School beat them. I thought that was very that was really mean of us because um, they did get beaten, they were beaten badly, but I thought that they had actually beaten us so badly that they deserved all the credit that they could get. But it was a difficult, it was a difficult loss. We wanted to win that Slater really, really badly. Um, yeah, it was, it was a very difficult, humbling loss. Were Doon School actually that good? On that particular day, yes. But never before, never after. On that particular day, yes. If I remember correctly, the the final debate was was won by, I think, the opening sentence yeah, made by Rajat Khanna, and after that, there was no doubt. So, I mean, in, in order to get into that, you need to get into what the debate was and what the motion was. And uh, there was a lot of politics uh, or cleverness, attempted cleverness by the Mayo College girls which sort of backfired on them very, very badly. Talking about mood, it really changes in school when Slaters is around. Mr. Mustafi, you too have been taking debating workshops with genuine interest. Yes. Do you see any changes in the way students approach debates now as compared to when you were a debater? Actually, yes. <clears throat> and it's really, really nice to see, see what this changes. The, the biggest change that I've noticed is that uh, of the team that was originally meant to be a part of the entire workshop, I think 100% of them were interested in the workshop and more. Right? And the second time the workshops happened, the third time the workshops happened, every now and then there would be a couple more students that would come in and out of it. But at no point did I get a sense that the people who were participating in this, you know, in these workshops were not interested in the workshop, 
be in being a part of um, Slater and see and actually debating themselves, which is really, really nice because that's, it's at least 16 more people who are interested in doing this than when we were doing this, you know? So I think that's, that's, that, that's phenomenal. I think the other thing that's also phenomenal is that there is a massive amount of world wisdom that exists today, which yeah. was a little, well, I would say it didn't exist as much at that point. Maybe we didn't have the internet, maybe we didn't Newspapers have the information all, yeah. as easily available at our, at our fingertips. Um, you know, but we did have a walking encyclopedia with us. <laughs> um, but, but at the same time, I, I, I still think, you know, all, all that apart, there is an overall wisdom that, that exists amongst a lot of the youngsters today, um, aged 13 all the way up to 17 or 18, um, which I, I find is really outstanding. Yeah, it has, I think, enhanced over the years. Yeah, definitely. Frankly speaking, I'm state chair, as most people listening to this as well must be. How do debaters find the courage and confidence to go up on stage? Is it innate or cultivated? You wear leg braces to make sure that your knees don't collapse. Uh, no, but seriously <laughs> speaking, it is something that you practice for, and the earlier you start, the better. The fear never goes away. Even when I have to go up today and speak either in front of the entire staff or when I have to address the school during a function, if I'm not prepared, if I haven't been told earlier, if I haven't sorted things out in my head, it becomes very, very difficult. I think you just have to overcome it. Yes, Isn't that absolutely. Mr. Mustafi, you're basically the OG of Slater. What are you expecting for the 25th edition? The honest answer is I'm not expecting anything. And the reason for that is because of two or three things. One is that I myself have lived such a distant life from the world of academia um, and from school itself. It's, you know, this is the first time I've actually had an opportunity to come back to school and get back in touch with what's going on over here. What I am expecting generally overall I'm, I'm, I'm expecting excitement because you've got 32 schools coming we've never had 32 sco schools coming for I think any competition if I'm not mistaken okay that's just a ridiculous number of schools coming and we're talking about these schools of the country right so that on its own is definitely going to be exciting but uh, if I were to go back and just just talk about how I mean do we have any expectations with how our boys are going to perform I don't, I don't want to put that pressure on them. Um, I don't want to put that pressure on myself. I wouldn't want to put that pressure on the school either. Um, you know, I think someone had said this with regard to, um, I think it come, it's going to come back to boxing again. Uh, it's never about whether, you know, it, it's not about the better fighter winning. It's just it's, about stepping up in the ring. No, it's, it, it's about the person who fights better on that day who wins. You see, and it's exactly the same thing with debates as well. So you, you, it, it's not always the best debating team that's going to win the debate, but it's the team that debates best on that particular day. When it matters. When it matters. And that's, that's what Sir was referring to when, when he was talking about the Dune versus Mayo girls thing as well. Um, that the Mayo girls sort of, they shot themselves in the foot by trying a few tricks that they should not have tried or could have avoided. Right? Um, I think on a really good day, our boys can definitely walk away with this thing, with their eyes closed, on a good day. Right? But at the same time, if they choose to be lazy, if they choose to be complacent, then they could get hammered left, right and center. That's just the, that's the truth of it. We hope they do win. Definitely, yeah. That was a conversation killer, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Thank you, Headmaster Sir and Mr. Mustafi. Thank it you. has been a great pleasure talking to you both. It's been lovely speaking with you. On this note, we end this episode. Thanks to everyone for tuning in and being a part of it. We'll catch you next time. We hope you find the courage to express yourself beyond the podium.